This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1395. Today's tip features massage therapist Megan Aro with some advice on not what forage to feed your horse, but how. Today's episode is brought to you by Purina Omega Match. Hey, listen up, horse owners. If your horses can't get out on green grass for their daily dose of omegas, Purina's got you covered. The Purina team of PhD equine nutritionists have two new products that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and taste better than many other sources. We're looking at you, fish oil. Try the new Purina Omega Match Timothy-based ration balancer or ahi flower oil supplement and see for yourself why these are among some of the best omegas that nature offers. It takes science and love together, each pulling their weight to help your horses live their best lives. Put our research to the test at PurinaMills.com slash Omega Match. Welcome back, Megan, here to tell us about how to use massage to help our horses feel better, therefore we feel better. That famous saying, happy wife, happy life, happy horse, happy life. Because if your horse is grumpy and unhappy, riding just is no fun. So what have you got for us today? Hi, hi Jennifer. Um, Yeah, today I thought I would talk about um, hay racks. Hay racks? Wait a minute. Hay racks, yeah. Hay racks? What does that have to do with massage? (laughs) It's sort of a prevention topic. Um, it's a bit of a, I, I do realize, and I will, I will even acknowledge more specifically coming up here, that hay racks have some benefits, but mostly they're kind of a pet peeve of mine um, uh, for a couple of reasons uh, for the horses. And in terms of massage, of course, we're seeing, you know, how comfortable the horse is and how, how well they're, how healthy their joints are in many cases. Um, you know, even if some massage therapists might not, depending on the techniques and style of work they're doing, they may just be working on soft tissue or it might be a combination of joint work and soft tissue work. Um, but we're always interested in making sure that the, you know, basically the soft tissue is healthy, the muscles are healthy, and this is going to relate to the alignment of the bones, and that's going to include the jaw joint and all the joints in the neck, which, of course, are going to impact the whole body, but relating most directly to how the horse eats, what what position their body is in, um, can really impact uh, the comfort and function of the muscles and joints in their uh, jaw and in their neck. Oh, sure. Anybody who's yeah. ever... Um like tweaked their neck a little bit or and I'm sure many of us out there have done this you're you're working with your horse you're brushing the inside of his ear you're doing something and he just has one of those moments where he swings his head around and kabam right in the jaw Mm -hmm. and you just get quite a hit there and it just knocks it out of the alignment it's that tiny you know that tiny little clink when you get hit hard in the jaw and that can make your head spin for weeks so I can imagine a horse who spends hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day chewing Mm -hmm. and then is asked to use his neck athletically, Mm -hmm. if he has issues with things being out of alignment or soft tissue muscles Mm -hmm. that are causing him difficulties because they're tense when they shouldn't be, that could be doggone uncomfortable for that horse. He, He could, yeah, I can see how that would happen. So explain to me how hay racks can have a negative effect on all of those parts. Okay, so, well, and thank you, by the way. You, you, <laughs> you described all of that so beautifully. <laughs> I love it. I've been hitting um, the jaw a few times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, of course, the most natural position for the horse to eat uh, is with their head down, of course. But not only that, um, m- most of us probably these days, at least in the United States, probably can't offer this to the, to our horses, but the most natural is to have their heads down and be moving, covering ground. So 
taking steps and, you know, chewing a little here, taking a bite there, um, as opposed to just eating from a pile of hay in one position. So eating off the ground from a pile like that is not um, quite as ideal as completely natural, uh, but it certainly, as far as the position that it puts their uh, head and neck in and their jaw in, is much, much more natural. Um, so the jaw, the lower jaw actually has to kind of slide forward, or, or does, when their head, head is down, it does slide forward naturally and changes the way the teeth can grind. So oh. when the horse's head is up to grab the food, now they don't necessarily do all their chewing with their head up in the air, even with a hay rack, they'll you know, reach up and grab it, and then they'll lower their head to, to chew, um, but not necessarily down to the ground. So they might not uh, get to stretch their top line as much um, if they're eating from hay rack as if they eat off the ground or from lo- closer to the ground. Um, so stretching their top line is one issue, um, but twisting their neck is also a bit of an issue, and the way they have to kind of, you know, pull, use their muscles to pull at, a, at an odd angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like um, a dog pulls on a chew toy that you're holding. Yeah. The tug of war kind of an action. Yeah, you're right, because um, I don't think Mother Nature designed their body to do that. And if they're doing it repeatedly over long periods of time, you're going to be, you are liable to be causing the horse some uh, difficulties, huh? Yeah, a little bit odd muscular <laughs> development, maybe. And as you mentioned, I mean, horses do spend a lot of their time and should spend a lot of their time eating um you know it's better for them to have the roughage and not not smaller quantities of concentrated feeds so it's much better for their digestion to have the you know the higher fiber roughage content right, and right. Spend, spend more of their time doing it for so, a lot of reasons yeah and now some of us end up having our horses eat out of hay racks or elevated feeding devices because sometimes it's a hay rack sometimes it's a hay net mm-hmm. um or uh, I've, I've often seen places where the feed buckets are set very high, mm-hmm. either because they were set when there was a much larger horse in there or something like that. So we have a horse that um, we can't avoid it. Our horse has to eat out of an elevated position way more than we would like him to. So what mm-hmm. can we do to help alleviate those subtle problems that are going to want to creep in because yeah. of that position? Yeah, and I do have a few suggestions for that. And I also do want to say that, um, yes, particularly with horses, like, for instance, if they're in a stall, and for some horses more than others, there might be safety issues where you can't have things lower, like buckets, you know, too low down. Um, And, you know, there are, hay is expensive. I know I've got um, horses myself, and it's uh, uh, always a little bit (laughs) of a shock every time you get hay delivered. So you do, you know, hay racks or feed, some type of feeder can can help um, with, uh, you know, preventing waste of the hay, which is um, certainly a factor. I don't think for most of us it's too much more important than our horse's health, but of course, but you can still consider it and take it into account. And then um, also, you know, having the horse, um, have clean hay and not, if, you know, if you have, for instance, a sandy area and you don't want your horse eating off the ground to get sand as a, you know, possible cause for colic and things like that. So, the, I mean, hay racks or, or various types of feeders can have some advantages or, or just might be necessary depending on, you know, where you keep your horse and whether you're allowed to, you know, what their rules, rules are about. Um, you know, using something like the hay rack. But there are, first of all, a couple, you know, a number of uh, more and more these days, which I'm happy to see as I've been learning more about them, of slow, the whole category is called slow feeders. Mm-hmm. So There's actually an entire website yeah. dedicated to the backyard engineer oh. called, called Paddock Paradise. Oh, I'll have to And it's, that it's, um, forum blog you know it's it's interactive you can you can sign up and be a member mm-hmm. and people trade ideas and there's lots of pictures and videos on pe- of people who make their own slow feeding devices mm-hmm. um it seems to be lots of folks in very cold climates because there's lots of pictures of winter time oh. <laughs> um, but you're right there are there are lots more options out there nowadays compared to what there used to be mm-hmm. if you need to 
um, keep your horse from eating sandy soil, um, avoid waste because he tends to walk on or sleep on his hay. Mm-hmm. And my favorite you had on that list was give your horse, quote, clean hay. Uh, there are a lot of horses out there who don't finish their hay. Mm-hmm. So people want to fin- feed them less and less and less until they finish it, mm-hmm. at which point the horse really isn't getting as much refuge as, as his system should have. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you give the horse better quality hay, that doesn't mean you give him alfalfa necessarily, but hay that is actually um, brome grass or timothy or orchard grass versus glorified lawn grass, which has been baled, um, most of the time they waste a lot less hay. They don't eat it because it's not palatable, not because they're not hungry. Mm. Um, so educate yourself on what you really are feeding your horse because mm-hmm. just because the guy who sold it to you calls it Timothy doesn't mean it is. Uh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, so we've, we've worked on those. You have a horse that, oh, he's stiff and he's creaky and, oh, I'm sure he needs some massaging. Are there some text, techniques we can use to test whether or not our horse has a jaw that has been stressed out from eating in a poor position or something we can do if we, are, if we suspect that that we can do to help him feel better? Yeah, well, I will mention I did um, do a, a horse tip daily some time ago, so if people go to my, you know, the com- – list of the past ones that I've done. That's on I have one on page, massaging, yeah. massaging the masseter muscle, which is the jo- one of the jaw muscles. Oh, okay. So I, have <laughs> I was going to say, there. what's that? <laughs> yeah, and I and I can add a couple things to that. Ooh, add more, add more. This is this is a tip. This is a tip follow up, folks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that definitely I would encourage people to listen to if they're interested in that. And then, of course, you know, when we're doing these, whether you find anything in their jaw or their neck or whatever, we can never really say for sure whether it was caused by the feeder or something else, but that's not the point. The point is just if you find some kind of soreness or reduced range of motion or something in your horse, you want to just do whatever you can to fix it, whatever the cause was. Um, So uh, one really simple one. Now, so the pole, you know, it's the area right at the top of their neck, right behind the ears, Mm -hmm. that first joint between the, the back of the skull and the first neck vertebrae. Mm-hmm. So that's an area very prone to stress, partly because it's the transition point there from skull to neck and and all the various things that the horse does with their head and neck. Um, they can get, uh, including being ridden by us, <laughs> um, they can get a lot of tension in that area. And then eating out of a hay rack could add to that. So one, the, one of the simplest things and actually can be surprisingly effective is to simply rest your hand gently on the pole, and you could do that either kind of mostly on the side that you're standing and then go around to the other side and do it on that side, or you might be able to just kind of have the center of the top of the pole in the palm of your hand and be getting both sides at once, be, you know, be more mm-hmm. on the midline. Mm-hmm. Either way, um, just simply rest your hand there gently and breathe and wait, and I would expect to... Um, you know, be there for several minutes and just watch your horse's eyes start to soften and their head start to lower. And this is just going to really create relaxation for all those muscles crossing that joint. I'm feeling sleepy just talking yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, at first, your horse, of course, I mean, a lot of horses will raise their head initially. Um, mm-hmm. just but, well, they're, they're going to go, ah, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, unless your horse has an issue with that area, which a number do, but most of them, once they kind of get over that initial guarding, um, and if you just breathe and, and don't put, you know, you're not trying to push their head down or anything. You're just, if they put raise their head up, you just raise your hand up with them so that you just maintain that connection, but you're not pushing on their head at all. Um, Good point, folks. Don't push. Yeah, don't push. And if they turn their head left and right, you know, try to get rid of your hand. If if their behavior is escalating, then, you know, take your hand down and, and you don't want to be <laughs> um, pushing it too much. But but if their behavior is not escalating and it's just init- some initial, um, you know, they're not really sure they, they want your hand there, mm-hmm. 
try to kind of just stay with them and follow their movements and not give them anything to pull against or resist against, but just at the same time be a little bit persistent. Mm -hmm. And um, if they feel that they can move their head freely, you're not restricting them. Um, You're not trying to hold on to them. They'll... And yet you're also not giving up and you're staying there, uh, you're keeping your hand there. If they're not, if you're not scaring them by doing that, which again, for a few horses out there, I mean, more than a few, uh, but a small percentage, you know, you might actually really be scaring them. So again, if their behavior is escalating, you don't persist too much. But most horses will pretty quickly start to relax and actually find it really, um, find some very good releases for their pole area. Well, good idea. I'm going to try that. Now, I'm going to have to stand on my mounting block mm-hmm. yeah. when I do this. Because How tall be- is your horse? <laughs> well, my horse isn't very tall. Oh. He's only about 15 hands. But his first reaction anytime anything mm-hmm. gets near his mm-hmm. the top of his head is to stick his head straight up in the air. He's just a little bit paranoid. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to do that because he does have issues with that part of his body. Mm-hmm. Um, he came with those, so we mm-hmm. kind of work around things as best we can. But that's a good idea to just... I'm going to try to put, and I want my palm right between his ears where the little pointy top to his head is, mm-hmm. and just let it sit there and, and relax until yeah. he goes, oh, nice. Yeah. Great idea. And, you know, you know if for, if for a horse who does have some concern with it, you can do this, you know, go through a process of gradually approaching the pole. You can get him used to having your hand resting, you know, in the middle of the neck or even at the withers if that's necessary, and gradually have it move up to the pole. Mm-hmm. He loves to have it scratched and rubbed. The thing mm-hmm. is, is, is he's just the funniest guy. With every single day, I put my hand there, brushing his head and his ears. Every single day, he has to go, oh, dear, I better put my head in the ceiling. Yeah. And then yeah. once I start to scratch, he goes, oh, it's lovely. But every single day, we have to start with, yeah. oh, I better put my head in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's his routine, and yeah. that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that one. That's a good idea. Do you have any other little handy-dandy, hands-on things we can do to help um, stiff, crinkly, hay-rack-ridden necks and poles that we can help our horses with? Well, the two other things, one one would be ear work, which uh, everything I just said about the pole pretty much applies to the ear work. Again, you know, if your horse maybe initially might put their head up, but if you can get them to relax and enjoy ear work, that's also going to have a general relaxing effect on that pole area. Oh, good. Go to, uh, go to Megan's website for more on ear work. Okay. Yeah, actually, I don't have a <laughs> lesson out on ear, ear work yet. but um, <laughs> Come on, hop to it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Add it to my to-do list. But And then the other thing would be to um, massage and stroke on the um, it, inside, under the jaw, you know, right between. You've got the big rounded part of their jaw on each side, their cheeks. Mm-hmm. And right in the middle between those, under their under their tongue. Oh, okay. The, that's the itchy, scratchy po- spot there. where the no seams give them lots of bugs bites in the yeah. summertime. Yeah. Never would have thought of that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So huh. that, and then yeah, again, if you um, a lot of times I, when I do mas- horse massage for clients' horses, if they ha- are fed in a hay rack, I'll usually, um, if nobody's looking, <laughs> or sometimes even if they are. I'll take their hay out of their hay rack and put it on the ground, it's figuring at least I don't want them to undo everything I just did <laughs> for the massage. <laughs> so if, if they still have to eat out of the hay rack, you know, seven and a half days or six and a half days of the week, <laughs> there we go. at least one meal maybe they can have it off the ground. <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you once again, Megan. Let our listeners know where they can find you and ask you questions, because I'm sure these interesting little tidbits are going to cause us all to start thinking and ask more questions. Yeah, and I love to get questions. It's fun to answer them, and if I can't answer them, they're great learning for me, too, because then I'll go out and find the answer, and sometimes they trigger ideas for more classes I can make. So, um, yeah, my website is all about animal massage. And that about wraps it up for today. Thanks again to Purina Omega Match for sponsoring today's show. We'll see you again soon. And until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>